The beach apparatus was regarded as one of the most important pieces of equipment the service used. It was designed to rescue those shipwrecked within 600 yards from shore when rough seas precluded the launching of a boat. The wreck pole represents the mast of a ship that's been uh, here in Hatters. We had a lot of shoals, especially diamond shoals, the graveyard of the Atlantic. Uh, the wreck pole and the two gentlemen you see simulate the mast of a shipwreck and two victims of a shipwreck. They usually carried what this thing is called the uh, faking box and it has the, the small shot line in it. They usually carried two of them, a couple different shots, and plenty of gunpowder. The actual gunpowder, the black powder, we use here for the drill just under one ounce, about seven eighths of an ounce. Uh, the gun itself, um, when they were using it all the time, was rated for six to eight ounces. So they were firing uh, from the beach 1,000 yards, 1,500 yards, close to three quarters of a mile. So they were, they were, they were pretty accurate when they had to do it. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. From accounts, most, most of the time, they hit on the first shot because they practice and train so much. But if they didn't, you, know, you lose a couple hundred feet of shot line and you lose the shot itself. So then you got to repack and, and use all new gear to try and get that line out to the ship. Um, when this line goes out, I'm going to have what's called a tally board, basically an instruction board that tells them to take this line, tie it to a high spot on your mast. And when this, once this line gets out, basically it's just a, a block with one continuous line to run through it. And that'll act as our, or basically our machine of the whole rescue. Uh, we can pull on one side of the line and send gear out and bring victims and other gear back. One of the surfmen will be acting as the victim. Uh, he'll get in the breeches buoy, which is all the breeches buoy is, is a life ring and with a pair of trousers sewn in it. So that way the victim can actually sit down uh, and bring the victim one at a time to the beach. So. In the event that it's a large crew, a tanker or a commercial ship, um, they may have to do this 30, 40 times, back and forth, back and forth. If you think about what those guys did with wooden boat, with oars, with the breeches buoy, compared to what we do today, they were rock solid and they set the foundation for us. Life saving service uh, didn't just save people. It did not end there. I mean, they go through all these drills uh, six days a week and, and then putting their life on the line to make the rescues. They bring them back. The first thing they need is first aid. The only people in the area trained in first aid. Uh, they kept a bunch of extra clothes because the first thing you lose in a shipwreck is your clothing. So they give them that. They give them a place to stay. They even make arrangements for your continued passage. I mean, these guys just did it all. And for those that did not survive, they buried them on the beach. It was just a remarkable group of people that did so much behind the scenes and, and America has forgotten all this. The Breaches Buoy is great because it's a kind of a forgotten part of our history in the Coast Guard. We're often the forgotten service, so to speak. That's part of our history that uh, those men in the Life Saving Service were so dedicated and sacrificed so much. Many of the buildings are gone now. A lot of the memories are gone. It's a great feeling to be able to keep that legacy, especially as a surfman here, following in the footsteps of the Scarboroughs and the O'Neills and the midgets that were here. It's an honor for us to do it, to keep their legacy and what they did alive today.